So the other day I'm checking my email and I come across a random email from somebody who has very obviously seen my debates before, uh, basically telling me that they could really wreck me in a debate. They could really own me, that I've been given softball responses before. And then they gave me their number. That's right. Let's go ahead and call this guy up and see what happens. All right, his phone number was 169-420-1911. Okay. Hello? Hello, is this John? This is John. Hello, John. Uh, you emailed me. This is Hunter Avalon. How you doing? Well, uh... First and foremost, let me just say uh, thank you for giving me your number. That's definitely a new one. So, uh, yeah, it makes it a lot easier for me <laughs> yeah, to call no you, though. And you said that I have better or that you, you said, sorry, that you yourself have better arguments uh, for God. <laughs> I think I do. I was just going to ask, are you, are you arguing in favor of, like, the Christian God or just God in general? Uh, I, think, uh, I think I'm pretty much settled on the Christian God for the most part. Okay. Where do you want to start with this? Um, well, I was listening to, I don't know when these debates were, were recorded, but I was listening to it probably two days ago. And I believe one of the things you said was, uh, uh, it was Noah's Ark. Mm -hmm. Story of Noah's Ark and Gilgamesh, I think is the name of it. The Epic of Gilgamesh, yeah. From Sumerian, the Sumerian guy. And one of the points you made was that I guess the story, the Hebrew story of Noah was uh, like a thousand years later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Epic sure of Gilgamesh came like out. That. Th yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. The Epic of Gilgamesh was written thousands of years prior to the story of Noah's Ark, and it was very, very similar. Right. And I don't see how that makes any difference. Just because it came out that I mean, to be fair, that you... wasn't like now to be fair, like I com it's totally fair if you disagree with that or we want to talk about that. That's fine. Um, But like that is not my like big argument as to why the I don't believe in the Christian God. Right. It's certainly not like because okay, of that. Well, I, That's much know, more of like a tongue in cheek kind of like, oh, this is also kind of ironic, in my opinion, when people say this is like the the word of God uh, that this story almost seems plagiarized. It kind of adds to the argument, but it certainly is not like my only and main argument. So I think the best starting point is it, there's kind of a cart before the horse, I believe, when it comes to, you know, religion and faith and that type of uh, that thing. Okay. So if you don't, if we just look at the world and we see, like to me, I I can look at the world in a mundane, every everyday kind of way and say, "Oh, we're here. What's the big deal? How you know? I'm not really thinking too deeply about. Oh my God! Like, how did everything come to be? You know, that's that's kind of a shocker if you really deeply think about that. For me, it is. So, well, how everything came um, to be is certainly an, an. I mean, that's something that we've been wanting to know since humans have been around, right? This is something we've all wanted to yeah. know. But the problem that a lot of Christians fall into is uh, the, the truth is none of us know the answer. Nobody actually, sure. nobody actually knows, even if you think it's God, that all it is is you think it's God or you have an argument or, or a theory as to why it could be God. Nobody knows, but a lot of Christians run into this thing where even though they don't know, they, they say, yeah, I don't know, so I'm going to actually pretend that I do know, and I'm going to say the answer is God, even though we, we can't verify um, that. We don't know this. I think, I think that for everything that you say, it's, you know, in a lot of uh, atheists or agnostics, you know, for all that type of point you're making right now, it really, it, who, who's the bigger, who's the one that, that's making a bigger leap, really? You know, just because we can't. And, and that's where I was going at the very beginning when I started kind of swinging it from the Noah's Ark thing mm -hmm. is you got you to gotta look at things from outside in. If you're a God 
and you're creating this world and you have inside of your own mind a way that you want to run it Mm -hmm. and you want things to be, then that's the way it is. It doesn't matter what the creation thinks about it. Well, it kind of does because isn't it correct that the creator in this scenario wants a personal relationship with his creation? Yeah. Yeah. That's so we, so if that's I'm to have kind of gather. Right. So if I'm to have a personal relationship with somebody, I do need to to know why they're telling me to do certain things. I do need to have a justification for the decisions that uh, are being made. Yeah, but it's pretty like in the Bible it's pretty clear, it's pretty evident what it is. It's pretty evident that God in the Bible says if you uh will obey my commandments and don't walk in fear, then I will be your God. I will take care of you. It shows many times where he provided for the children of Israel in the Bible with manna from heaven. Excuse me. Yeah, but a lot of the Uh, ways that God said that things should be, just it doesn't check out, right? Like I got a follow-up to your email earlier about something about gay stuff. I mean, the Bible says, apparently the Bible is anti-gay or God is apparently anti-gay. Why the hell? What's wrong with being gay? Gay people okay, adopt okay. at higher rates. Gay people <laughs> contribute to society. They help this, orphan kids, kids in the foster care system. What is right. wrong with being gay? Look, I, I understand what you said. This is why I, I was saying, this is the whole reason why I said that the gentleman that you were talking to, you were debating with, he, he seemed kind of young, and maybe he hasn't thought about this much, but I will tell you, it's not about the being gay. You're you're looking at like I said, you got to look at it from God's view outward. So he does God view us. being gay is wrong? Hang on a minute. He he created us to operate a certain way, like in the Garden of Eden, the perfect human being, the perfect software for a human being, was written by God that that we would operate a certain way. And when the fall happened, all the corruption that happened within. Now we're looking for a way to soothe ourselves from that emptiness that we feel from this, from from being separated from god so in that comes all these other things all the, so um, being gay the feeling is a sin that is manifesting as a way to fill the emptiness left there from not acting yes. or behaving the way that god made us to yes. behave yes yes so is being gay, gay a sin then even I think even you could even make an argument that just a normal heterosexual drive is is a fallen nature too, because in the Garden of Eden it doesn't really talk about sex. It, it says that Adam lay with Eve after they fell. He didn't have the need or desire for her in that way prior to the fall. So you could. Well, make I thought that it was because they would never die, so there would be no reason for a reproduction. I guess hypothetically. Well, I, look. I'm not like a person that wants to say I understand everything in the Bible, but I think that you could make an argument that says any type of sexual drive comes from because you know Jesus said we're okay. Well, that falls into a whole bunch, but you don't even understand like how how detrimental that would be then. So let's say you're right then that all sexuality really is actually because of the fall. Does that mean it's then wrong? To engage in your sexuality, if it's say consensual, if you're think, married, if you're straight, I don't really, in your mind, I'm I'm a pretty liberal kind of guy. I don't think that God judges us like that. Like the way that human beings judge, you know, if I if I had a friend that was gay, um, and he was, I mean, he was for me, it was a lot. You know, we used to talk and joke and have fun, but for me, it was a lot. But um, I never really judged what he did. You know, if he told me about some ex, um, you know, some uh time that he had you know, yeah, but, you, but you're thing. saying i'm not asking you to judge sorry to cut you off but i'm not asking you to be like yes i think he that i condemn these people or sinners or whatever i'm not asking for that i'm just asking whether or not according to you in your opinion whatever according to the bible being gay would then be a sin right because god made us to operate a certain way but it's deviating from the why way that do you god have made us to have it why do you have to have that be said in order to have any understanding I don't need it to be said. I just so, want to make sure that I want to know if you actually believe that it's a sin or what do you think way. about I put saying if I if I break uh okay, let me think of any sin that I could if I lie 
mm-hmm. or if I have ego and I deal with some, I remember, it, it, bear with me for a second, okay? I remember being at work at a job and I actually would get pleasure out of hearing somebody else fail. And I, it wasn't something that, that I really could identify until I really put my eyes on myself. And I was like, wow, I cannot believe that I'm actually happy that this person's failing. That mm-hmm. would be an example of being a fallen creature. I know that I don't know God because no one that knows that is, is, has a relationship with God mm-hmm. and he's changed them is going to have that kind of ego. That's not love. So are you saying that and no so, one would, so does that follow then that also those who have a relationship with God would not engage in homosexual desires? No, I don't believe anybody that has those urges truly knows the Father. Okay. So then it is technically, even if you don't want to say it's a sin, I mean, it's something that is fundamentally deviant enough from the way that God made us to operate that it separates them from God. Yeah. It's not that, though. You're missing the point. No, you're not I'm, I'm trying to build to a larger activity. point here. I'm try- The reason I want you to acknowledge your view of being gay as a sin or your view of being gay as wrong because it deviates from how God made us to operate is because there's actually nothing wrong with being gay. Gay people bring a benefit to society and adopt at higher rates compared to heterosexual couples. So why then would God say this thing is wrong if it's not leading to a harm? I don't even care about that. Like being better for society and you know, all these types of arguments, God, uh, knowing God in the way that, we're, that we should know God mm-hmm. will be better for society than anything. We got all these problems right now. You can go down the list, political stuff, religious stuff, racial stuff, anything you want. And if our hearts were right and we had love, then those things would be fixed. When we there was like the Jim way. Crow, when there was like still Jim Crow policies going on and, and, severe racial tension and blatant racism still on display, was America more or less religious and Christian at the time? Uh, I would be very hesitant to say they were, you might call them religious, but just because people go to church and and you say that they know God, that they know the Father, I don't necessarily believe that they do. I'm very hesitant. You know, I, I go to church every now and again, and you know, I hear what they're saying, and I mm-hmm. I would probably say that there's a handful of people in the world that truly have made it back to the Garden of Eden. All these preachers and all these different, I, I think it's a bunch of baloney. Honestly. Okay, well, I mean, Gallup poll, in Gallup surveys in 1950s, over 90% of the adult population identified as Christian with only a small percentage claiming no religious identification at all or identifying with a non-Christian religion. So at a time when people were at least more willing to identify themselves as Christian and more willing to profess to be a believer of Christ, racial tensions were worse then. Things were worse. How would returning to religion make things better if we already had a time when things were actually worse when we had actually still stuck with religion then? Hunter, right? Hunter's your name. Hunter, Can I call you yes. that, Hunter? Yeah. Um, it says in the Bible, Jesus said that there are few that will know. He says, many will come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, and he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. He's saying that all these people that are saying, Jesus, I know, this, you know, all this carrying on in the church, all that is a bunch of foolishness. So you could, you just said it was you're just saying you're or just what? deciding this, and also you said you're not one to hold on. No, no, no. Wait, you you finish, said you're not. Let me finish, let me finish first because you said you're not one to judge, <laughs> and now you're judging. I'm going back to what you said. I'm trying to go back to what you said with the statistics. I'm I'm responding to what you said about the statistics. All right, go ahead. I'm I'm saying that it says in you know you want to call it my religion. I I don't confess really to be a Christian, actually, but if you want to say that, you know, the people back then said whatever the, whatever the percentage was, they confessed to be Christian. And I'm telling you that in the religion, in the doctrine of the religion, mm-hmm. 
it says that most of the people that confess it are full of shit. So how do you so know who's legit and who is. isn't legit when it comes you to religion? You don't know that. A person doesn't. Only a person can know in their heart if they know God. And you can somewhat see by the fruit of a person, you know, if, if they have anger, you know, if they judge people, if they get really, like, like locked into issues and they believe things that are thrown out there. There's all, you can almost look at anybody. Probably Trump is the only one that I can honestly say right now. Uh, that's a public figure that is really solid. He's got a solid foundation. He's not shaking, you know. Wait, Trump, you think he's solid factor. as Christian or? Yeah, I mean, you can say the word Christian, but that's really not what it means to know God. It, Wait, you think know God Trump knows have. God? Didn't you just say you can see them by their fruit? I don't, I don't, I don't know. No, I, look, I can't know for a fact. Um, only I can know my personal, what I, what I know is that I don't know God. But when I look at another man and I see his actions, I could, I could think like, wow, God's dealing with that person. He's changing them, He's cleaning out the inside. So how, is, how, is, how do you feel that that's happening with Donald Trump of all people? Uh, because I think that a man's first duty is to his family. And with Trump, it's like God has given him a higher calling to the family of this country. You know, this country, America, is like a big family, and he's like the daddy trying to bring the children back and care for the children and establish rules for the children and say, hey, we're, we we got to get back to the right way to do stuff. Okay. You know? Um, so that's he's trying to do that. He's trying to fix Trump the immigration cheated on thing, his wife, you know? though. Trump, Trump cheated yeah, on his I wife. He, he was God, incredibly nasty and disrespectful towards his family. It's the heart, man. It's the heart of it. Yes, a person, a man could fall. Like David, he cheated. He had a man murdered, and then he cheated with uh, Bathsheba. But okay. then he went before God. What's up? I'm, I'm, I'm just, are you seeing the issue yet? Because you're saying, hey, I'm not one to judge, yeah. man. I don't like to judge. You said that about the gay thing a second ago, and now you're judging no, who I is or is not. Oh, that. stop, stop, please. You're judging who at least <laughs> is more likely to be legitimate and who is and isn't a Christian based on their actions, but very arbitrarily. Trump, I mean, grab it, him though. by the pussy. Someone who is being That's changed man, by God. Man talk like that. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 no. See, you, you, you're saying so many things wrong so quickly right now, and it's kind of sad. No, well, you gotta slow it down, man. Slow, because you're trying to because... justify now Trump's nasty comments by saying he's a man. I don't give Hang a shit. I thought men slow it down. Are so, okay, men, their first duty, <laughs> you just you. said from God, is supposed to be to their mm -hmm. family. So saying, gra I just sure. grab women by the pussy. I do whatever I want with women. That's very disrespectful. But but to but you're not your you're not you, you're 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 saying that as if he said that like yesterday. He said it in that 2016, the same kind of time when he was professing to be a Christian, trying to get the evangelical vote. Sure. Okay. I mean, it was nasty. But when I look at the way he's dealing with the country and stuff like that, and maybe. You know, when someone is given a lot of power and responsibility, they rise to that occasion. He wasn't in that public. Maybe God wasn't dealing with him the same way at that point. What is? And what do you think Trump changed. is doing they did. through God? What do you? How do you think Trump is is helping America become more on track with God's plan? You know, um, like dealing with China, trying to take back a little bit of our credit in the world financially, like the thing he was saying with NATO. Eddie haven't been paying. You know, this kind of thing doesn't just happen at the, at the worldwide stage. It happens at the local level, local government, state government, people embezzling. I mean, it, it's amazing what happens in politics and people act like it's normal. And then Trump's going against the deep state, all the people that have been corrupt and all the different regulations that have been put upon us by non-elected people. You know, um, the border, you know, you're looking at the border, all these people are coming through. You know, they, they take jobs from us. You know, people don't believe that, but it's true. I work in the trades. Believe me, it's happening. Um, but, if, you know, everybody tries to make it seem like it's about racism. I mean, say what you want, thing? but you can't change a – go ahead. I'll, I'll talk for a little bit. Go no, ahead. no, 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 no. Sorry. I was just – I was ask, actually asking a clarification thing. You said everyone says it's racism, and I was saying – you mean with Trump's immigration thing? You're saying a lot of people are yeah, saying – Yeah, I mean, well, you know, if you're a conservative person and you say, look, I – we have enough problems in this country with the race thing, with black and white. 
you know, it seemed like for many years, I'm 42. So in the nineties is when I was in high school and all that. And we, everyone knew about races. Everyone knew about slavery. It seems like today, everyone's acting like we had no idea about those things. No, we were overcoming What, is, what does that. that have to do with immigration? Well, I'm just talking about the racism part, you know, like where um, when people try to take a strong stance on the border and like, look, you have to come here legally. You can't just flood the country. We have to take a look at who you are. You got to be bringing something to the country. We got our own problem. We're trying to deal with uh, this is why this is why I brought into it, because we're, we're dealing with our own problems right now with race, mm -hmm. with all the rioting and everything. Why are we going to bring more people that are of a different race when we already have all these crazy problems going? We got to fix our problems first before we can have that attitude. OK, so now, I can respond to a couple things. Common. First of all, I don't all know right. if you're familiar with Leviticus 1933. When a stranger uh, enters your land, you shall not do mm -hmm. him wrong. You shall treat the stranger with you as the native among you, and you shall love him as yourself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Trump's immigration thing doesn't always check out with certain biblical stuff or whatever, but that's much more side point. Um, as far as the immigration- All right, we gotta come, you gotta write that down. I gotta come back to answer that because I gotta respond for that, but go ahead. All right, go ahead. Just go ahead and respond to that because that's not really my, the main crux of okay. my argument. So okay, we'll just... number one, number one, the Levitical law was for the Jews, it was for Hebrews. It was not for the whole world. Mm -hmm. Those people were ordained by God to bring about the savior of the world. Therefore, they had certain rules of purity that they had to follow. And, sure. you know, the thing that what you're saying about um, a stranger in the land and stuff like that, right, a stranger can come through, you treat them well, you, you, you treat people right, but an invading force, of course not. And okay, so that's that's your big problem right there. Is you're you're assuming that immigrants are coming in here as an invading force. So this is something that I was yeah, actually just less, in an I argument mean, with, uh, with somebody on yesterday. It's overwhelming about, numbers. Yeah, because, it's overwhelming because well, first of all, I would be curious to see where you're getting those numbers and if they're actually illegal crossings or if they're uh, just look around, encounters man. Look or if they're just you. encounters. You don't have to look at the numbers. Look around you. OK, you Everywhere do need to look at the turn, numbers because you're making an empirical claim right now saying that there's a lot of people flooding over the border. That literally is an empirical well, claim that demands a justifying but you number. See it there, on okay? the news. You can see the, the border okay. patrol people are saying it's out of control. You sure. Know, so so let me let me give you a place. couple. OK. And we can talk about that. By the way, I'm not by no means I'm at like an, in favor of like open borders or anything like this. Uh, I just think that people need to be far more realistic with their perception on immigration. So something that a lot of people are in denial about is that undocumented immigrants pay billions into social security and receive no benefits. Undocumented immigrants are not actually sapping they all should. of our social services. They are paying more into our social services than they're taking out. That's something that they, a lot of people don't know. Look, I, they should pay. You know what? You can't buy citizenship. I don't care how, how long you've been here. If you came here legally, you didn't come the right way, and you're paying taxes, that's on you. You should pay taxes okay. because, well, I, honestly, I don't want yeah. your tax money. You should you all... go back. Wait, you don't want <laughs> you know their taxes? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. No, no, no. Please. No, I want them to go wanna... home. <laughs> Do you realize that if you did that, you would lose billions of dollars in Social we Security, lose... right? We lose billions of dollars. I mean, what? $30 trillion is the debt right now. I mean, what? What what difference does it make? They're going to borrow the money anyway. They're going to put us into inflation. You realize that if we deported all the undocumented years. immigrants right now, there would be a $1.6 trillion reduction of the U.S. GDP as a result? <laughs> like, th this is what you're Look, saying right now, is, is not... you would be willing to tank the fucking economy and on, ruin Hunter. America. Hold on. No, no, no. You hang on. Hang on. You're willing to do these things, okay. or at least risk well, it, I mean, you're, just you're, because you're people came I'm the wrong way. That. I'm not. I'm not You just said I'm you want to send them back. You yes, just said you but I don't want to. I, I am in favor. I guess I don't know what I'm in favor of. Yeah, I want to send them back, but I can. I'm realistic enough to say we can um, assimilate people. If I am in favor of stopping the flow, hundred percent. I can put everything I got on stopping. Okay, the flow. as far as now the people you, already you do here, first. do you think that they should all be rounded up and deported? No, I think you could look at it a couple of different ways, but. I mean, if, if you really want to pin me down on this, I would say we would have to interview people and find out, like, when did you come here? 
what country are you from? What you know, we gotta get information on people. And of then course. So this is something that I don't disagree with were... you on, by the way. I think that if you're gonna enter this country, ideally we would have people entering legally, of course, because legal immigrants also bring benefits. This is all true. The problem right now is one, the way in which uh, or the process in which one becomes a citizen is incredibly complicated. Uh, it's one of the most challenging processes in a, a Western. Glad. Why are you glad? Why? Why don't you think because that having? Well, hold on. Let me let me at least finish what I'm saying here because when you have a process right. so difficult and so lengthy, you realize you just incentivize illegal immigration, right? But not if you put up the border wall. Not if you secure the border. I mean, people use the border wall as like a meme or whatever. But securing the border, I don't care how you do it. You secure the border, and then you're not going to immigrate illegally. <laughs> so what is your you big issue here. then with? people entering this country illegally, besides which the thing I already agree um, with you on, obviously, is if they're not citizens, they could be criminals. I don't like that. Demographic change is a big thing to me. Um, I'm, what is the, all right, know, well, no, no, I'm stopping you there already. I need to know what demographic, demographic change, what do you mean by that? You know, just the, the way I see it is if you, um, you had like a, a locked ratio on the different races that, the country started with, you know, you could pick a time, but before all this immigration happened, where you had a certain amount of whites, you had a certain amount of blacks, a certain amount of blah, 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 blah. And you lock whatever that percentage is of all the different races. And then you wanted to bring people in and keep the demographics the same. Why? I don't have a problem with that. Why? Because I, because what the, what con the country started out as, it, the reason why it became great, it had a lot to do with that. What did the country start out as? What are you getting races. at? Are you trying to say because there were white people? I mean, that's who created the majority of what we have in this country was Europeans. Is that who so, America yeah, was originally for, of, according to many all of the, the All the greatness. Uh, I, you know, I think you have to think you have to think about why the country ended up being the way it is because of the, the uh, Constitution thought process that was put into that mm -hmm. that had that nothing to do with people, anybody being white i think so i think that the way um you know when people escaped tyranny from you know england they came with ideas about how to go forward from there how are we going to how are we going to move forward from the monarchies you know and how the religious have anything to uh, do with white people because they came that was their culture they had a certain way of thinking and uh, it just, it just, ha they just happen to be white. I mean, they're a set of people. You're the one so making then, about the white. No, no, no because you I'm said saying, that America, what made it great, you're saying it's their culture. You're making the, this so, faulty appeal that like mindset. culture and race are somehow intertwined or, or necessarily connected. You realize that yeah, most think, immigrants that come to go, America assimilate here, right? They take on our culture. You realize that, right? That's that's uh, what happens with, with the vast your majority of this. data? <laughs> oh, I, I thought numbers really don't that. matter. I'm sorry. I, I'll look at. I heard a guy say it like this one time. He said that when you get certain numbers, people go into their enclaves and they basically just bring that country into their enclave. They, they, okay. Yeah. You this know, just isn't this isn't music. true. So I I need to just cut you off because you're saying I mean, so I many stupid things place, really really man. quickly. I don't care what you see Why are because you're you, stupid. Because so, you're stupid. I, so I'm telling everything you, you're telling huh? me right now is fucking stupid. Everything you're telling me right now is so. stupid and racist. So. Yes, I don't think, if I think any reasonable person could be like, "Wow." So are you now, aware that diversity? Actually... So are you aware that diversity actually inspires innovation? This is something that a lot of people no, aren't aware of. Yeah, I'm not aware of that. having diversity I don't see that at all. Okay, well, having diversity actually inspires that innovation. <laughs> Companies that embrace diversity, for example, are more successful. Uh, banks that have more innovation. I don't. Uh, or, or excuse me, banks that have more diversity uh, have more innovation as a result of that. So you know, by by uh, advocating for this reduction of diversity, which is part of the things that has actually made America great, uh, you're 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 forgetting all of this. This is very important, and Hunter, you're just neglecting it. You're what what you're doing. I see this a lot with your kind of debate, kind of like your ideal idealism, I guess is that you start looking for things that are, you think are good in someone else's mind, which they're really not. See, in my mind, it's not about 
what makes a company more innovative or any. This country is is the most powerful, the most I think is the most free. But I mean, I I will say that we seem to be losing that, and I I have a I think I understand why, but um. I believe that the reason is it's the mindset of the people. It's the heart of the people is, is, is what that is. It's the way that we interact with each other, work together, you know, uh, to make what we have. Well, you know, and you want to go yeah, back. Yeah, when, when you don't have diversity, you also lead to groupthink then because there's a you problem. A little bit of diversity. I'm not opposed to that, but I just don't think you bring it over here. When these countries have failed, why do you think these countries in South America have failed so badly or in Africa or in, uh, Wait, you know, I want um, you to tell me that you think it's because of the color of the skin of the people there. No, I don't. I'm not saying it's because of the skin. I'm saying that in, they have been isolated within their, their, uh, you know, areas, geographic areas for so long that the mind, you know, people think the same way in the area a lot of times. Wait, people if, think what? You know, Louisianians, if people stay in an area, like Louisiana, I'm from Chalmette. I, I live in Chalmette. People in Chalmette have a way of thinking about things, and they talk to each other, and it, it becomes echo chamber. And pretty soon, you interview somebody from Chalmette, two people that don't even know each other, all of a sudden they think the same thing because this is the community. So if you're from Guatemala, no offense to those people, but – the way that they interact, I was told by uh, a man one time, he said that, he was, I guess he was a missionary or something, he spent a lot of time down there in Central America. He said they're very dictatorial, meaning that they take, when, when someone, your boss says jump, you say how high. You don't question anything. Okay, so I, say, I, I need to just we, keep cutting you off because it's starting to get uh, annoy me right now. So you're you're saying that these people, from, annoyed, man. From, you're, you're saying that these people <laughs> from this area uh, due to the way that their government is or due to the the culture and environment that they are, uh, that it has basically affected their their brain or their thinking so much so that it's very hard for them to assimilate yeah, I, essentially I into this that country. Happens. Yes, I think that happens. Okay, so do you realize that when America country. was okay, so do you realize that when America was first founded, it was actually not for white people, it was for Anglo Saxons. And white people sure. who we That's would – hold I on, please, please, I need to finish this. This is crucial to my argument, okay? Yeah. I'm just, so I'm just white people that you and me would look at as white today, like me, I'm Italian. I wasn't considered white. Germans weren't considered white. And you know what uh, one of the founders That's said fine. as to why they America wasn't for them? Because their brain couldn't understand or comprehend the idea of freedom. That's why America is only for Anglo-Saxons. Yeah. And now, I, I all these years later, here you are making the exact same arguments, only this time why we need to have a certain amount of white people in the country. But see, but see, he was right in the sense that you can't overwhelmingly uh, usurp a people. And no one's in, being usurped. You know, no one is being usurped on, by a group of people that's bringing on, more honey. jobs, less crime, on, and honey. boosting the economy. Hang on, Hunter. Hang on. I'm making sense. I know you don't think so, but I am making sense. If you bring an overwhelming, it's like it's like you're making a uh, you're making a roux, you know, you know, like you're making a base for something, and you put too much of it in, it gets all clumpy and stuff. You don't have time, you don't, you can't mix it in, you know, and get that puree kind of uh, uh, mixture. You know, you have to add a little at a time and let people. You know, like I said, I'm not 100 percent. You know, I would think you go from a lock ratio, like white, black, Hispanic, and blah blah blah. And then from there, if you want to kind of add a little bit from this country because they're not doing so well, and you know, hey, we need some people in this kind of doing this kind of work. Yeah, you can raise the number a little bit, but then you have to adjust it over time. You can't just say we're letting all the people just come across the no border. No one's saying this. You're making a false equivalency right now. You're creating a false dichotomy. But that, but that, no, 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 no. You're saying that doing. you're saying these are our two options. We either let the country just be flooded by people with open borders, no rules, nothing. Just let everybody come in. Or we ha though. hold on, wait. Or we have to have a set cap on how many people from this ethnic group can be in the country. There are actually, there's actually, a, because there's a middle ground. How about? What do you want to happen? Yeah, I want there to be immigrants 
preferably legal immigrants. So I want to make it easier to become a legal immigrant here. Because if it's easier, then you won't be incentivizing people to come here illegally. So how easy? How easy would it be? Would it, I, I don't know. I'm not a policymaker. I, I don't have like the every little but, last but minute detail. That, but that's, that's, um, that's absolutely important. If I just allow people to come in, I could be getting take over. There's a, uh, you keep doing it. I'm not saying nah, just allow people to come just... in. I'm not saying that. <laughs> but you, you don't even know how you would make it easier. Like, how would you make it easier? Like, what, Well, for one, I think we like could probably that, cut a... back on wait time, uh, depending on how many people are involved in the bureaucratic process with the paperwork and everything else. Maybe get more people there. Uh, I, there I'm sure there's lots of things you could do. Get more so employees. You don't think I mean, the country is diverse enough. Then we should bring in more different people, right? I, I don't think that the country is not diverse enough or too diverse. or any, I just, I don't. I, I don't really have a problem with it. And also America, I mean, I'm- But I'm, you're making a kind of a big debate about Because the you to are me, saying very, that you I'm think very, that a lot of our problems are from diversity when this is just not true. When diversity brings benefits like innovation, when, by the way, did you know that actually how to get rid of racial tension uh, and, and tension with different racial groups is actually by exposure. So people in uh, neighborhoods with more diversity are less racist than people who are just in one area with the same race people. Because I really don't care about that. I think if people, number one, I think if people want to be racist, I think that's fine. It could be racist. I don't care. Well, yeah, I mean, um, you're... I don't have problem. I don't have a problem with, uh, you know, people are just fine how they want to do it. They want to interact. You know, I'm in the South. I'm in Louisiana. I have everything around me. I mean, we don't. We don't function if we don't cross the line, believe me. So we're just I, fine with that. Um, I don't see what the problem It seems like up north is where y'all ha really have the problem. No, no, I'm saying that. I don't know where you are, but. So wait, let me get this straight. Part of your issues here is that America right now has a lot of racial tension, mm -hmm. right? Correct? Yes? Yeah. Okay. And so bringing in everything. more illegals, more different yeah. people, that or more people that look different from us could worsen that racial tension, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I what I'm saying is actually what would happen is more exposure leads to less racism because oh undocumented immigrants. <laughs> hold on, no. hold on. You, I know I'm making sense to you now, and I'm getting through to you. No, undocumented. Not, you're not. Can We're I? Adults, can I? Hold man. on. Let me finish, please. Let me okay, finish. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Undocumented. Sure. Undocumented immigrants commit on average, less crime than native-born Americans. They commit less crime and pay more into social services. So they are benefiting this country, right? Even more so, the exposure I mean, to people that look different literally maybe, quashes not... out racism. Look, okay, okay, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I, this is absurd to me. Like I said, we're, we're grown-ups here. We don't need someone holding our hand and saying, we need you to expose you to the other culture. I have my own culture. No one's saying this. I don't need no to one's saying you need to have your hand, hand, hand held, hand but we're saying, no, you're hand literally hand saying hand different hand. cultures in this country can lead to all these issues. You're the one that needs Under. to have their hand held and be exposed need, to the other cultures. We don't, we don't need to be exposed. So I'm fine. I don't need no other culture. I'm good. Okay. So let I me read this really quickly culture. to you. I know Hispanic culture. Hispanics, when I was a kid living in never saw Hispanics. They were nowhere. Now, and I have no problem with them, but now it, you can see these, and they take all the trade jobs. You cannot get hardly any trade jobs because they've got all the contracts. And uh, to me, a big thing of it was um, that what I see now is they were so cheap whenever, you know, uh, I guess back in the 90s, maybe the 80s, they undercut everybody that was an American. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm listening. Oh, okay. I, I don't want to drone on and on. You can stop me, but um, it seemed like what happened was they were so cheap that people started hiring them through manual labor, and these guys learned the trade. And then as time goes on, now the prices come up. Now they own the contracting businesses. Now they own. So it's like they undercut us. But that's not and happening I, I, with illegal immigrants right now. Right, because now they own all the businesses in, in uh, the trade. And now they're hiring their people only. Okay, but I'm so saying with the, the but I'm saying your analogy, what you're saying right now, is not comparable to illegal immigrants because that's not what's Why happening. Not? Illegal that's immigrants. Were. 
So according to Pew Research Center, a majority of Americans say immigrants yeah. mostly fill jobs U.S. citizens do not want. And I know that that's just what people are saying. How do they so, know that? How yeah, do they know hold that? Hold on. Let me finish. How do they know they don't want them? Hold on. Let me finish, okay? <laughs> Many immigrants so living legally debate, in the U.S. Right? hold jobs deemed essential <laughs> by the federal government. Unauthorized immigrants account for nearly a tenth of all U.S. workers in food industries. So I'm sure that the people... But I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? I'm trying to pay it. I'm, I have a hard time paying attention. Can you no, I'm sorry. Repeat it's, what you just said? I so said I unauthorized immigrants account for nearly a tenth of all U.S. workers in food industries. Unauthorized account for a tenth. Okay. I, I can believe that. So they are filling... But, uh, let's see. But, they Hunter, make up a significant we, share of workers in food industries. No, I'm getting to the point. The, the point that I'm trying to get at is that the jobs that they're filling, it's not like undercutting Americans. They're paying into social services, okay. boosting our economy and filling jobs that generally Americans don't want. OK, Hunter, we're not getting to the heart of the matter. Let, let me let me shine a little light on something in okay. case you haven't noticed. Let me say it this way. The emotional position of a lot of young people in this country is they've given up on the world. From mm -hmm. what I can see, what I can gather from being out in the world and online and listening to new stuff and your research stuff and everything, is that these kids, they have no hope. And now, you know, they, you know, because of the economy and how much money they make, it's like they're just giving up and living with their parents. So why are they going to go? And, and I, I think that's horrible. But, you know, the reason why you say they don't want the job is got there's a lot of stuff behind that and not just oh they don't want to work no, you know i know they still want yeah they still want to work they just might not want to work at that job specifically the point is is that right so far okay so the point is is that illegal immigrants are bringing benefits no matter how you flip it they're filling the jobs no. that most americans don't really want to work no. they're they're it's boosting okay. the economy and paying more into oh, social services than they take Hunter. out I got, and I got they the commit less crime than native-born Americans. Hunter, I got the point. You said that a few times. I, got I know. I'm going to keep repeating it in. because I keep on repeating should, the benefits here. And you've given me no solid you, negative. You're repeating, you're repeating benefits, but I keep trying to bring you back to the heart of the matter. It's not what about – just remember what I said earlier? You remember when I told you earlier? You're, you're, you're saying things that you think are good. A lot of people, I don't want to say the majority, but many, many people, a lot of people voting for Trump, they don't really believe those things are good. Okay, what they believe that's is good. That's fine if it, they wait, don't. They don't minute. believe them because they are led what, astray. What I'm going to tell you, I don't want to be talking uh, past each other here, but let me say this point. A lot of people want this country to, I guess, to be reset in its principles. That's what they're longing for. They're longing for people to say, we are Americans. We want to do for our country first before we do for everybody else. We mm -hmm. want to make sure our people are taken care of first. Yeah, okay. And if we help everybody, so, no, no, no. I'm cutting you off. I'm cutting people. you off. I'm cutting you off. So right. they want to make sure our people are taken care of first. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Illegal immigrants are paying more into social services. They're Not taking care of us. Wait, social, secur social security, $13 billion contributed by undocumented immigrants to social security. You're saying it's not about money and that's not important? What? It no, is absolutely okay, about money. You're talking about taking no, care not. of our citizens and illegal immigrants are literally doing that. I can that. tell you why. I can tell you why it's not about money. Okay, it's why? It's demoralization. Is a demoralization that I'll say the Democrats have inflicted on this country because, you know, immigration is just one thing. But the way that they run everything, they're running the country into the ground. And people are seeing that. Where? And there's a demoralization. Well, it, it, you know, in the government. In, in which in, way? In How, spending, where where would you say America is being led into the ground the most? Where are you yourself negatively impacted the most? Well, you know, I can see that the way that inflation has completely crippled the the country. I mean, I can see it in my own life. Everybody talks about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that when the government doesn't know how to get it, a handle on programs, you know, Social Security, for years they've been saying that Social Security is a failed um, program and it needs to be reformed to save it. And the Democrats, every single time that it comes up, we're going to reform Social Security. 
they freak out and say, oh, God, you want to throw the senior citizens out? Into- no, we need to reform it. We can't even talk about that. That's why we're $30 trillion in debt. Medicaid, Medicare, all these pro people see the spending as crazy. Our politicians are not hearing us. And, you know, the thing with, you know, just to switch gears, we look at the judicial system. Trump, it wasn't fair what they did to him. It wasn't fair what they did to, to Dinesh D'Souza. They targeted these people. The, uh, the IRS thing, where they were targeting conservatives. Okay, I'm, I've got to you slow know, down I don't here. claim hold, to have all the... Hold on, hold on. Uh-huh. Okay. I, I got you, I got you. But the inflation thing. So... What do you do? You think that this is just a like? Obviously, I will concede with you. Uh, concede that there is issues with inflation right now. But like, why do you think that is? So I'm looking at stats right now. For example, and in 2021, Trump was leaving office, so he was still president. There was a massive inflation spike then. Then it went okay. down. Then it went a so little let, lower. Now it's steadily let decreasing. Me get, let me let me get the names because every president it changes over and over and over. You could go back and forth. The heart of the issue is. People want politicians that will see the problems that are there and deal with the problems and not – we all think – this is what the Americans think. They think <clears throat> that politicians are bought and paid for. The people that sit in Congress, they believe that they're, they're blackmailed. I get they that, but you're not saying anything right dying. now. You're not making an argument to me right now. I need to I, – I understand that I mean, America – the argument ha- is the demoralization of the people. People want the government to do for them and not for the rest of the world. They want to get the principles of the country back, the Constitution back, the, the way it should be <coughs> when the country was founded. I can Small agree with. Government. I can Don't, agree with this. Whether we're talking to, if we're talking about you know our our involvement in in foreign affairs and whatnot, there's certainly a conversation yeah, I, to be I, had there. But if you're talking about immigration, sure. still, it, this does just doesn't apply to immigration. No, no, anymore. no. Let, look, you you want me to just keep going down a rabbit hole on that? It's a, it's a, it's all the different problems, and they're glaring. Okay, but I want to try to focus and, on like one because I, I, at least want you to understand then that we can talk about infl- like inflation rates. Fine, that is like inflation is up. That's I get it. Um, fine, do you think but like an immigration problem. Do you think that immigration is causing this inflation stuff? No, hang on a minute. Just answer that question, please. Just please bear with me. Answer that. Humor me. What? What's is the question? Is there a problem with immigration? Just yes or no. You, I'm not asking in you what you regard think. to immigration, a problem with immigrants just entering period. here, a problem just with period, 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 security. Is there a problem with immigration? Any, any problem, any problem that needs to be reformed? Uh, yeah, the, the process okay. by which is you become a, a citizen. Is there a problem with government spending? Uh, I, I mean, generally, I think so. I, I guess I would need to look okay. into it, but okay. Um, I, is I'll there a problem you. with race? Racial tensions here? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so I could go on and on, but every issue you're going to tell me there's an issue there. And what I'm saying is the people in this country that are looking at the politicians and they're saying, you, I I can't cuss because I I know you're recording it, but you you cuss. You know what? You know what? I don't want to do that, though. I mean, I swear a bunch, dude. It's fine. But either way, I I just feel like we're getting a little bit off traffic. Topic because I, I no because you're 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 debating you want to keep going down in, in every issue and give me stats and stuff. no I want to try to like have closure people... with one thing before we go on I know I'd ask you like generally I mean, like, you what closure. is some no no I mean I know I ask you like some of the all right go some... ahead I know tell, I ask tell me what's your what issue do you want to you want to pinpoint all I was gonna say is I know I ask you if what some of the issues with America are and and whatnot but. We were on before on the topic of immigration, and the reason I asked you that is because I wanted to ask if you think that these problems going on are because of immigration. And if you're saying no, no that it's not, be- I, my biggest then why? Then but but then the reason I keep trying to bring you back then is because if this is not because of immigration, you have yet to prove or give me a single problem, a single thing wrong with immigration with the they illegal don't immigrants. Like us. They don't like us. What do you mean? They don't like us. The, the immigrants don't like Americans. They don't like our way of life. They think um, we're arrogant. Uh, there's all kind of, they don't like us. Why do you want to come here? Why do you here? think that? I don't know, and I don't care. If you don't like me, you shouldn't be in my country. And I know that they don't like us. And I'm not saying every single person. You know, not, of course not. And, you know, this. I have a good friend that's, uh, I don't know how he got here. I never asked. Um, he's from Honduras. But, uh He's a good man. He's a Christian, and he's, uh, there's no guile in him as far as I'm concerned. But I'm not looking at individuals. 
I'm looking at the totality of it. I'm looking at the way when I drive through these neighborhoods and I see the way that they have no regard for rules. You know, they have no regard for the music, the blasting and, you know, other people like right next door Who? to them. They, you know, they pee under the, uh, the, the car, you know. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I missed that. Who are you talking about that have no regard for, for people? Well, right now I'm talking about Hispanics. And, and, and okay, I don't want to hear I'm this though. Hispanic. I don't. I, I really don't. I'm not that worried about that. I don't need to hear about you saying all uh, these issues. You don't that. care, but I'm telling you, the issue with most people is what we see in front of us. That they don't care for our culture. They don't like us. You're so saying because of your you, experience of seeing some Hispanic no, people. Wait, wait, hold on. People's experience. Because of a lot of people <laughs> in your clarifying. local area having experiences all over the place, man. With hispanic people peeing under a tree this means oh, illegal place. immigrants are all a problem like, do you understand the magnitude like the the fallacious uh uh no over generalization you're making here not, no you're not no. this is ask like if anybody. i said hold on ask dude anybody. stop stop rambling for a second if i said <laughs> you are rambling <laughs> no if i said to you that if i found 50 stories from florida about Florida man uh, committing bestiality or committing murder, do you think it would then yeah. be fair for me to say, look, here's 50 examples of this. This proves that white no, men are bad. It's not, it's not, but we know Why not? that these people are new here. They're new here. We don't need the interjection of all these new people coming in. We, it's clear to, I mean, look, the internet, you can, I don't have to just talk to people around me. I can hear stories from people in Florida. I can hear stories from people up there in New York that are going crazy because they, they're overflowing in their schools and, you know, stuff like that. They're giving the benefits away to them and not to, like, the low-income black communities. I hear stories from all over the place. Believe me, it is unbelievable. It's unimaginable what's happening right now. And we got people that are saying, oh, nothing to see here. You don't see anything. It's it's a lie, man. It's it's gotten to the point where it's out of hand. So I'm I'm and literally adulthood? searching for any kind of evidence as to whether or not undocumented immigrants like collectively dislike America or something. They and do, I cannot man. find anything about this. What I can find though is stuff about immigrants uh, wanting to assimilate and coming here and wanting to work jobs. So that just doesn't seem and likely you know, if you those people sign. Hold on. If those people simultaneously despise this country, why are they risking their lives to come here? Why are they participating in our economy? Why are they taking the time to over 50% of uh, immigrants as of 2018 are proficient in English? So they're taking the time to learn our language. This does not sound like a group of people that just hate, our, hate this country. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Because we're wealthy, we're free, and we're safe. And we have created that. That's the good thing about America. We have created a society where people obey the rules, where people work hard. That's the wealthy. They That's what immigrant, the rules. It's I, safe. immigrants are doing that. Illegal immigrants are doing that too. Yeah. They commit they, less crime. So they're following the rules and they're working they hard. Like us. There is a 95.8 like percentage employment rate among undocumented immigrants, dude. I don't care, man. Why? Like, I don't understand why that matter. Why should that matter? Because of what you just said a second ago. If I'm from North Korea and I go to South Korea, I don't have to like South Korea or not like South Korea. I'm going there because they have food, you know, and I can get a job. I'm free, you know. If I'm in, I live in Guatemala, of course I'm going to come to the United States. I don't mean I got like Americans. Oh, let me say this, and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Um, the races, for the most part, do not like each other. And I'm not okay. going to say nothing else because I, I don't want to get into questions yeah, about well, how So I far, know. your analysis on all of these things have been really bad. But before you it's said, fine. before I mean, you I'm, brought up, hold I'm on, just hold a man on, in please. the world. You brought up the American values. You said, you said, we want people here that follow American values, people that work hard and obey the rules. Remember that? Sure. Right. Yeah. And so what I've said is that illegal immigrants commit less crime than native born Americans, meaning the vast majority of them obey the rules. Second thing you said is mm -hmm. work hard. Sure. That's why I said there is a 95.8% uh, employment rate amongst undocumented immigrants. They're working hard. Then you said you don't care about that. But you should care about that because you just said that was an American value. Right, but it's also an American value to have love for the country, love for the people that are here. 
you've that, not you provided evidence that they don't love they the don't. people here. I All I can to, give I, I can give you evidence that evidence they're participating in the economy, committing less <laughs> crime, following the rules, benefiting American citizens. I can give you all that. Okay, that doesn't seem like the action or the, the the behavior of people who despise this country to me. You've given me like this wishy-washy like you feel like it cuz like you once saw somebody pee under a pine tree. Me and I mean, like I just told you earlier, the internet People that I talk to in my life, you can see it everywhere. People that I talk to, they see the same thing. We all know collectively the immigrants. Now, if they came back in the 90s, you know, they we have friends. Immigrants what? Whatever. We all know collectively but immigrants the amount, what? Say that one more time. You said we all know collectively that immigrants. I'm talking about the people that think like me, that are looking at the situation where they're bringing, allowing all these people to come in and they don't care about the country. They care about their culture. You're That's saying, all they care about. They don't. Not, okay. I, yeah, I don't know how to argue with you when you're just saying things um, now. And I think now. probably, I would probably say that most of the Muslims are not culturally, uh, not most of them. I don't know about that 100%, but I do know that there's a place up in up north, maybe Michigan, I believe, where there's like a call to prayer in the town. Uh, to me, that's a spit in the face, you know, outright to Americans to have a call to prayer over an american city um i don't know what you think about Wait, that could you, but I mean, so I think what, what do you what did you say say that again a call to prayer you know and that's just one little example you know i don't really follow that one as close uh, i know in europe i, I don't want to switch gears to europe i mean unless you do but it seems to me like they're really having a problem they're being overtaken by the muslims so their their cult their culture is completely and those people are dangerous with it I am and not I getting into really... this other side of the, con the this part of the conversation yet. Especially, I I don't want to gear off of. No, <laughs> no, I'm not scared. I just don't want to. Uh, I don't want to pivot away from. Why you hold on. Want to. No, I don't want to pivot away from American politics right now. Okay, but I'm saying what's happening is just it's a microcosm of what's happening in Europe with the Muslims. That's what's happening here, but it's going to take longer because we're a much bigger country and it's harder for them to get over here. But believe me. They want to take out us just like they want to take out. I mean, just like they did back. I just, in, I, d I guess, I don't believe you all, because uh, so far you're not really hungry. able to say any. You're not able to really give me any proof of this. Like the whole reason I mean, you're saying that undocumented immigrants hate America, you're comparing. By the way, Ill undocumented immigrants to to uh, Muslim immigrants. So there's a big difference there as well. But either, regardless, <laughs> you're saying that they dislike America with no evidence. You said you saw somebody pee under a tree, I dude. I see it. They what don't else like do you our see? Customs. They, they, I mean, what else do I see? Yeah, you're saying I see Let's it. See. I see it. It's everywhere. District, we all think what? What? I'm, what else? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what I see. I see the glares from them when they see me. They see people like me. They don't want us in their spaces, like right here at the gas station where I live. When they're playing their music. And they're drinking on the side of the gas station, turning into a club out there. No respect for the people that live here that don't want to see that. That's what they do in their country. And that's the kind of thing that we, you know, do I don't you think know that where that, you live. Do you think that people who are or, citizens never do stuff like this? Like, nah. And wait, you, know, you don't think did, that, that U.S. Be... citizens hang outside of gas stations and drink? No, or I glare at people saying... and are mean to people. Really? I was I was saying that they do, but here's the difference: they are ours. So you don't go to somebody else's house and behave badly. When they let you in, you go there and you behave with your best manner. So we let you in this country, and then you come here and and you know blare your music and yeah, you know it's a free country. I mean, like, you can yeah, listen to your music. <laughs> well, you know, it's not. It, we should decide who gets to come in. That's the thing. If me and you are. Uh, we have an apartment together. It's not the same thing as compared to a, a house. It, it, no, it no, it's is, not. It is no, it's not. Thing. A space it for an individual is not, not comparable not? to an this, because a space how, how for an individual, a building for an individual, is not comparable to a sovereign nation, my friend. A big difference. Why not? That's why. Why not? Because so the there are so many differences. But you're, you're starting to like just died. schizo post at this point because you're, you're melting down completely on the undocumented immigrant thing. You're well, not, you wanna, you're not you able to take... give me a single negative 
you you've now you've I've kind given of given you a bunch of them. no you haven't you've said they don't like our country uh because they don't <laughs> are you okay you realize that you could make this argument better you want right? me to prove you, that no no, no I, well yeah i, I do care actually about how to make it better i'm making it you realize that I'm you could just it. say I'm like you, hey in my experience i really haven't had the best treatment from people that uh seem like they could be illegal immigrants but you know what? That no, doesn't mean that, that all illegal immigrants don't like America. Just like I'm not going to say that. Okay. Well, can I say something really quickly? Because I'd like you to tell me how you what you would think about this. How would you feel if a feminist said, uh, "In my experience, I have been abused by men repeatedly, so many times. She had an abusive father. All of her boyfriends were abusive. Uh, and then she says." I've had this really terrible, traumatic experience with men. This is why I say that all men are and shitty people. That's why men are trash. Would you think that was okay to say? Uh, uh, probably not. But like you said, it's a difference between a country so and why an not? apartment. I'm saying it's a difference between people that you can't get rid of or you, you can't allow in. What I'm saying is if you're allowing people to – okay, let's just take it back. You said – that I can't use my what I observe and what I, other people observe of other races and specifically the Hispanics because we allow them to come in. The no, I'm not. I'm, are, you can look at your so observation. I'm not. I'm not no, I'm not saying that your observation is not real. So I don't know. Debate, what I'm saying is that you cannot draw from your observation that this is the case for the entire for for the entirety. Of the population of undocumented immigrants. Well, who cares? Well, who cares if it is I do. or not? If, it's if happening, your claim is that they do don't like allow? America, so, and it's it's based on your own little experience, your little experience is not, just that a experience. It's it's not just my li my own little experience. I'm telling. I said it earlier. If you go on the internet and you talk to people on Facebook, if you talk to people anywhere, you're going to hear the same stuff. I can find it's, so many where, stories on Facebook, on live. Reddit, on Twitter of people all saying how men have been so creepy to them. They've touched them inappropriately. And then you know what they say? They just, say, come on, it's just men. That's how anywhere. men talk, dude. That's how men talk. That's, that's how men men act. anywhere, man. That's men anywhere. But they are worse. <laughs> believe me. They are way worse. So you're recognizing that that's right how men... Now. Wait, no, no, no. You need to stop, please. You're recognizing that uh, a large amount of men are kind of creepy, pretty pervy, can be a little and shit like that Maybe, but you would I still guess, deem but you would know. okay but you would still be against drawing a massive conclusion on all men and saying men are creepy men are perverts and I trash don't know. i don't know i don't know about that i don't know so you would be okay with somebody uh, saying men are trash i mean yeah that's their opinion sure i mean what do they get what are, i don't really care about that no no, no. like would yeah, you but like trash sure Huh? Wait, wait, that's just women saying shit like that. I don't really know how that affects anything. Women always talk. I'm about asking that. if you think that's valid. If that makes sense. If you would be okay with that. If somebody said you're trash in, because you're a man, and I think men are trash, that's why you're trash. When you say trash, I mean, what do you mean by trash? Because I'm perverted, mean, yeah, I rapey, creepy as fuck. No, I'm not that. I'm not that. But... So then you would not like. Be, be, if the, someone the... called me that, I would say, "Well, prove that I am." Okay, so you okay? So you wouldn't like? Are they trying to bring me to? Are they trying to bring me to like the law? Are they trying to bring, you know accuse me? Of no, all, I, all I'm pointing out here is that you obviously would not like a, a being painted with a broad brush here because no, some men are inappropriate and perverts and creepy. You would not like being told that you yourself are trash because you're a man and men are perverts. That kind of a generalization okay. doesn't do any good. And but that's what and you're doing a, with undocumented <clears throat> immigrants. And if there was a group of 100,000 men on an island somewhere that were like, we want to come into the country, I'd be like, no, 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 no. We got to check, y'all. You're not coming in this country until we talk to every single one of y'all. And even then, we only going to take like 100. We ain't got room for that. <laughs> you know? I'm not I'm not for letting anybody in just out. But the way we've done it here, and Hunter, I know you don't like hearing this, you're man, just, but I'm you're telling you. dancing all over you the place. You not You're not, no, because you're not like, it's like you're not hearing the words I'm saying. I'm trying to point out the fundamental issue with saying that illegal immigrants don't like America and basing What's that on issue? hold on and basing they that don't. on your <laughs> own experience. I'm trying to point out that saying because your own experience with 
illegal immigrants is that they haven't been very nice to you or they don't like America. It's not fair or logical. Why do I need to, to have then go? Other, why do I have need to have other proof to say we shouldn't have them in? If everybody has this, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not not. Um, if everybody has this experience within their bubble. And not everybody has this experience. You can't build I mean, an argument. You cannot part. build an argument on something this fucking wishy washy, dude. Uh, I mean, I call all right. it what you want. I, I, listen, look, you hey, I appreciate you giving me your number, but I'm going to have to deport you. All right. See ya. Sorry, sweet. Okay. That was just like a mind fuck, basically. If you want to support the channel, please consider becoming a member today. Members get early access to videos, access to all the stream VODs, and exclusive access to emotes as well. So if you'd like to support the channel, become a member today.